Hey everybody, Mark Spector Comics and I'm back. This time, got my package here from CGC. I'm excited to open this up and see what books we got inside. If you're interested in seeing what's inside, stay tuned for the intro. Alright, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. Like I said, package back from CGC. It took about, I don't know, just about three weeks, which is right around the going rate for um, CGC's turnaround time. So I'm excited to see what's inside. If you watched my previous video, I showed off the books I was sending off and potentially the you know expected grades that I wanted to get. So uh, let's open these up and see what we got. Hoping to get some uh, nine eights in here, of course. And uh, there was a couple of books that I wasn't too sure about. So that's going to be the. Uh, we'll see if it's the make or break. All right. So we got. Let's first make sure we got the uh, correct amount of books here. Two, three, four, six, eight. All right. We got eight books which is good because when I sent off the form, I had some issues with the submission form online. It was not allowing me to put in, I guess, you know, the books for the submission the way I wanted to. They weren't showing up. It was showing with a bunch of errors. So I contacted customer support and they got back to me within a couple of days. So their customer support is fantastic. You know, I can't, can't stress that enough. Um, and then they were able to uh, send it to my new address because I'm away from home for the time being and they were able to get back to me right away on that as well. So that was great. So let's start off with the books. All right. All right. So first book. All right. Good. So this is the, these are the three exclusives that I got for the, um, the Batman, um, issue number 135. This was legacy number 900. I don't usually get the uh, exclusives with these. I don't typically chase them, but I thought these this was a fantastic cover. Simple, simple, but a nice cover, you know. And it went with the kind of like the the foily theme I was going with for this submission. And uh, this was, like I said, the gold foil. Um, when I you know looked through these, they all looked like nine eights. There was one that was a potential for a 9.9, which I highly doubt I'm going to get, but let's all shoot for 9.8s. And the first book is, boom, 9.8. All right, so uh, the next thing I just want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the slabs because I believe now they have like a two-week policy where you have to contact them and send it back. Otherwise, you kind of like miss out if there is any cracks or whatnot, but... um. This one looks fine, and uh, looking at it closely, I'm surprised there's a tiny little, you know, not a scuff, but like a slight indent, and I think that's probably why it was a 9.8 versus a 9.9, but like I said, I expect all of these to be 9.8s without a doubt, and, um, you know, doing the math, on these, it was cheaper for me to buy the books raw from the company, from the website, uh, from, um, what do you call it, uh, I believe it was Big Time Collectibles, was the site, then uh, buying it, you know, pre-screen 9.8s, which I think it was $89.99. Um, doing it this way, it came out to about 50 bucks, so I saved, I saved uh, quite a bit of money that way. All right, so next book. This book, this book was cool because I ended up picking this up at the Comic Crawl in uh, Connecticut. Um, we went to Sarge's. This was the last stop, and ended up picking up like half a short box there. And it was only like, I think he only asked for twenty bucks for the whole half short box. So it ended up coming out to like seventy cents a book. And this was one of the books I wanted to send out. This was that Night Watch. Issue number one, that really cool hollow foil um, edition. 
and they actually notate it there in the middle, hollow foil edition. Um, when I sent this out, I was hoping for a 9698. The book looked pretty clean. I, I didn't get any of these. I'll, I'll tell you which ones I did get pressed, but this one was not pressed, and I'm hoping for a 9698. So uh, let's see what we got. Boom, 9.8. Sorry about the glare. The glare is not really. I'm in a new place, so trying to figure out the lighting. And obviously with the foily cover, it's not really helping, but um, I'm ecstatic that this came back as a 9.8. Oh, I think that helps a little bit, uh, at least with the glare. So that's all right. So sorry in between if, if you know, it's getting a little bit of additional glare messing with the lighting and so forth. I got to figure that out eventually. Um, but I think this looks okay. If not, you guys, I'm sure will comment that <laughs> down below afterwards. All right, so that's book two. So far, two for two, 9.8s. So we're at a good start. All right, next book. All right. So this was one of my spec plays. Um, I bought this book... I want to say a few years ago, I bought this at an antique mall. Uh, I think I paid like four or five dollars for it. And I really like the character from the uh, original Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show on ABC. And uh, there was some talks that the character may come back in the Secret Invasion uh, to reprise her role. Uh, Chloe Benet, I believe, is the uh, actress's name. But uh, this is from Secret War. This is the um, Brian Michael Bendis series with these amazing covers done by Gabriel Del Otto. This was issue number two, uh, two of five, I think, right? I believe so. Yeah, two of five. And uh, this is the second printing, which all the second printings came in this uh, sketch covers. So this book was pressed. I was hoping for either a 9.6 you know, or better. Um, it's tough with these white covers, you just never know what you can get and, and what they, you know, when they grade it, if they see any of the flaws. So we'll see. All right, what did we get? 9.6. All right. So that's not bad. I was hoping that it was a 9.8, but it is what it is. Uh, it does say on there, first appearance of Daisy Johnson, which is Quake. And it does notate that it's a sketch cover. So, uh, cool. There you go. So... We got two nine eights and a nine six so far, and they're all let me see, yep, all white pages. All right, cool. All right, book number four. What do we got? All right, cool. So um, this was a book I actually picked up right before I left. Um, I ended up going to a flea market down in the southern part of the state. I believe it was in I want to say Tiverton. Um, didn't end up getting a chance to record any footage, unfortunately. It was just like a quick in and out at the flea market. But um, this was a small little vendor in the corner. He had a bunch of comic books, action figures, like wrestling figures, um, cards, statues, and so forth. And he had a small little section of wall books, nothing too crazy. But this was one of the books that I ended up showing, and I talked about it. Uh, this was Infinite Crisis, issue number five, uh, first appearance of uh, the new Blue Beetle, which is Jaime Reyes. Um, obviously, there's going to be the Blue Beetle coming up, uh, DC movie coming up in, I believe, late summer or early fall. I forget now, um, but really excited for this character. I am predicting that the Blue Beetle will be the best DC movie of the year. Um, we'll see. At least the trailers look pretty interesting. Kind of gave me some of the, like those Spider-Man vibes. Like it'll be that kind of storyline. We'll see. Like exciting factor. But I paid 40 bucks for the book. It was a little pricey. Um, but the book looks, it, it looked like a contender. And I took a risk. It didn't get pressed or cleaned. So if it comes back at 9.6, I will not be surprised. But I'll be happy if it comes back at a 9.8 as well. So, uh... Let's see. Boom. All right. 9.8. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let me take a look at the slab. And um, yeah, it looks nice. All right. And it's tough, too, because the back of it, it's a black cover. 
So, you know, these covers can be a little unforgiving at times. Um, the back of it looks pretty clean. There was this one little section here on the side I was worried about, like a tiny little, you know, imperfection, which, like I said, I wouldn't have been surprised if they dinged me for it, but looking at it, it looks like it's the only issue with it. And like I said, you can have imperfections with a 9.8, otherwise it'd be a 9.9. .9. But that's awesome. Um, I do also have the cover B, which the cover B, um, let's see, is, uh, oh yeah, so this is the Jim Lee cover. The uh, cover B was done by, as it says on there, George Perez. So I did not send off the George Perez cover. For some reason, the cover like B does not go, it's like half, it goes for half the value of the uh versus the uh, Jim Lee cover, because it does have the cover appearance on there. But, uh, so, you know, got lucky on that one and got a 9.8. You know, sometimes that does happen. Uh, so, we got four more books to go. All right, so next book. This was one of the books I picked up uh, last year for Pride Month. I just love the cover. It looked really cool. It's um, a Jen Bartel cover, yep. And, uh, you know, fitting to send this off during Pride Month. And this is DC Pride uh, number one from 2022. Um, nice foil. I think this is the one in 25 or one in 50. I forget what they labeled it as. But um, I know it's the Jen Bartel cover. And looking at it, great colors, pretty vibrant. And this should be a 9.8. Boom, 9.8. Um, yeah, this book was, the book looked, you know, was flawless. And that's why I was like, well, I don't have to press this. I don't have to send it off. You know, and that's, yeah, it looks fantastic. Um, there's the back of it. You know, people love to see the back of the covers too sometimes. But uh, yeah, this looks fantastic. Um, not really sure what this book goes for now, but uh, I know there's a market for uh, Jen Bar covers. So there you go, 9.8. All right. Yeah, notice these. Um, I had gotten some uh, CGC uh, books recently, and I've noticed that these. Um, these cases are a little different. They've done some modifications to these cases. Granted, that one's a little different because it's square bound. Um, it's a little bit, obviously, you can see it's a little thicker compared to the, you know, other case. But uh, I've noticed it feels it feels different. It feels different than, uh, than previous cases. So that's also something to... Uh, to notate. All right, so put that aside. We still got three books to go, and I know two of them are the other Batman 135. All right. Well, if you guys are liking this video up until this point, and you're still hanging out. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up, and then let me know afterwards what um what books you liked. So I'll save that one for last because that one isn't the Batman book. So uh, here we go. One of the last two Batman books. Like I said, I expected these to be all 9.8s. And if I got lucky, I'd maybe get a 9.9, but I highly doubt that. So what would we get? 9.8. Awesome. All right. And just make sure this looks okay. Good. Okay, get the last Batman book, and then I'll show off this other book last. So I'm excited for this book. There we go. Boom. Another 9.8. Excellent. And then off to the last book. This last book I was excited to send off. Um, because I was a, I'm a fan of the series. I like reading these kind of series. The you know, 
post-apocalyptic type of storylines, especially the indie stories. This one is Akira Number no. 1. Um, I had this book pressed by a good buddy of mine, Justin, Justin Comics. So shout out to you, buddy. He pressed this book several times um, just because it's another square bound book. Oop. As I'm moving it up and down, it is, it is, <laughs> it is moving a little bit in the case. So I don't know what they did with this new generation slab, but uh, you, you can hear it shifting a little bit. Um, it's a little thicker, the square bound. But um, this is Akira number one from um, 1988. This is the first print. I don't know, I forget if there's any additional prints. I don't remember. Um, but this is the, it says on the first American appearance of Kaneda and Tetsuo, first full color printing. Um, I picked this book up at the uh, Grafton Flea Market for $1. Um, still still kicking myself because they had a ton of Akira's there, first printings, and some of the really rare ones, and I did not pick them up. Uh, I picked up the first one, uh, paid for it, went to a different booth, and then when I came back trying to get the rest of them, they were all gone. Uh, and I was bummed out. But either way, I got Akira number one. I've been trying to get this book for quite some time. You know, I didn't want to overpay for it. I was more than happy to pay a dollar for it. Um, Sent this over to my buddy Justin. I believe he pressed this book like four or five times just to get a bunch of the imperfections out of it. I knew it was no chance of getting a 9.8. There is this tiny like um, little indentation there at the bottom. It looks like a little bit of the cover piece was taken out. I knew that. There was nothing you can do about that. But there were some issues where you could press out. It needed to be pressed out. Um, and when I sent it to him, I was hoping for it to be a 9.0. Um, I don't know how much they were going to take out for that little part there at the bottom that was missing. It's tough to say, but if I got a 9092, I was happy. Um, and when I sent it to him, it was probably like in an 85 range because it needed some work. Um, so, uh, what's the grade? Boom. <laughs> 9.4. That's awesome. Um, I was, uh, not expecting a near mint, that's for sure. Um, but like I said, the corners, you know, they're sharp. I'm looking at it now. There's a tiny little uh, crease there. Not a crease, but like a color break in the bottom bottom left corner. There's that little section there I was talking about that you cannot fix. Um, and I'm looking at the back. Yeah, it looks, the back looks clean. Um, if you have a never had a chance to read this book check it out it's a really really good story um there is talks of potentially making a tv series or a movie i have no idea um but uh either way regardless this is just a good series to read and you can still pick this book up cheap for like 40 i don't know 30 to 50 dollar range in a fairly good condition but i was not expecting this book to be a, a 9-4 which is really cool so, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, eight books, six of the eight were nine eights, and a little surprise there with the Akira. I'm, I'm happy with the submission. That was pretty good. Um, definitely you know, a submission that went in my favor for once. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, like I said, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and in the comments down below, let me know what books you like, if you had any of those. Uh, and so forth. Until next time, Mark Spectre Comics, out.